Hidden San Francisco, the guide to lost landscapes, unsung heroes, and radical histories. Stop D12, San Francisco Diggers, 1966-69, Panhandle Park at Oak and Ashbury Streets. The San Francisco Diggers, who took their name from the revolutionary diggers in England of the 1640s, first appeared in late 1966 as a series of broadsides on walls around town. Cloaked in mystery provided by a refusal to use their names, a fluctuating group of radicals galvanized the burgeoning counterculture in the months that led to the media-hyped Summer of Love. Peter Berg, Judy Goldhaft, Peter Coyote, Emmett Grogan, Billy Mercott, Kent Minault, Lenore Kendall, Chuck Gould, Jane Lappiner, David Simpson, and many others came together to pioneer a politics of serious play based on the concept of free. Free food, free music in the parks, free stores all challenged the swirling youth culture to go beyond the predictable and ossified forms of politics, theater, art, and daily life. Several of the original diggers had been part of the San Francisco Mime Troupe before breaking away, finding the form and organization too constraining. They sought to engage in life theater, a form of enacting the world you wanted to live in, rather than performing for audiences or waiting for social change to be granted by authorities. San Francisco quickly became their stage, or the canvas of their radical artistic expression. The diggers hit upon the idea of providing free food to the influx of thousands of youth and did this by preparing a huge pot of soup and dozens of loaves of bread to be distributed every day in the Panhandle Park at 4 p.m. This idea arose from the simple realization that there was a huge amount of food going to waste in San Francisco. In this period, people started banding together in food conspiracies to acquire food directly from farmers and cut out the profiting middlemen. A number of diggers started asking farmers at the Alamany Farmers Market for their unsellable produce at the end of the day. That was the foundation for the free food project. The supplies were supplemented by various Robin Hood-like endeavors at local supermarkets, but the enormous job of cooking up many gallons of hearty soup every day was carried out in the kitchen of several digger households, primarily by the women in the group. Digger bread got its name because it was baked in one-pound coffee cans and the top would spread out in a broad, crusty cap, which became a recognizable emblem of their free bread. Every afternoon at the Panhandle Park, the soup and bread would arrive, and dozens of hungry young people would line up to get their serving. A couple of diggers would stand along Oak Street where dense traffic flowed by, holding up a six-foot square yellow frame made of two-by-fours. In order to get your meal, you had to step through this free frame of reference, while it also framed the distribution of free food as a tableau vivant of sorts and served to highlight the challenge to daily norms they sought to mount. A small two-inch version of the wooden frame was handed out to soup recipients as a lapel pin so anytime they wanted to, they could hold it up to their eye and change their frame of reference. Free stores were soon opened where clothes, furniture, appliances, and even money were available to anyone who wanted it free of charge. One older woman who was stealthily pocketing various items was confronted by a digger. You can't steal here. She indignantly replied, I'm not stealing. Who are you calling a thief? The digger smiled and said again, you can't steal here because everything is free. The woman left only to return the next day with a flat of cupcakes to give away at the store. It didn't take long for people to adapt to the new logic. In October 1966, the diggers staged a death of money procession, leading to the Panhandle Park in a bonfire where money was burned as a Bacchanalian dance swirled around the fire. This was the beginning of a number of events that caught the imagination of the time and were soon being trumpeted from coast to coast. Diggers kept up a steady stream of broadsides to circumvent the efforts of the mass media to shape their narrative. After the event called Invisible Circus took over Glide Memorial Church in spring 1967 in an overnight festival of drugs, sex, and experimentation, the media-hyped Summer of Love kicked in. The diggers had spent so much time serving food, organizing concerts, helping launch the free medical clinic, maintaining their free stores, etc., that in the face of the mainstreaming of their efforts, they were ready to hold another parade announcing Death of the Hippie, which they did in October 1967. We carried a coffin down Haight Street, and people threw beads and trinkets into the coffin, and then it was taken down to the Panhandle, which is just right outside of Haight, and uh, burned as a pyre is burned. As hard drugs flooded the Haight-Ashbury scene, many diggers began to decamp to rural retreats in Northern California. Different individuals would go on to new efforts, many of them ecologically minded, in the years to come. 
Peter Berg and Judy Gold have founded Planet Drum Foundation in 1974, helping to popularize the idea of bioregionalism, and convened the Frisco Bay Muscle Group gatherings at the farm in 1978, an important series of public discussions helping frame radical ecological thinking at the time.